Good afternoon and welcome to the lovely campus of Francis Marion University. We're in the Smith Center and we've got double header basketball action coming your way in Conference Carolina. The Patriots are going to be taking on the Converse University Valkyries uh, this afternoon in the first game of the Twin Bill. The Patriots had a good victory yesterday. They they don't have the, the actual score, but they beat North Greenville by 10 points yesterday evening. The men had a fantastic finish, beating that same team in a buzzer beater when Alex Cox dropped a three right in front of the scorer's table to end that game 95-92. to 92. So we'll talk a little bit more about that after this first game. Our Patriots, they're coming in with a record... I'm a little bit frazzled right now. The, my stats aren't in the, the, the normal spots here, so we'll see where we are. Francis Marion. They're 10 and 8 in the conference, and so that puts them seventh overall in Conference Carolina. So that's got them solidly in position to go to postseason action. Converse is Conversely, down to 2-15, and 15, so not really a threat to make the playoffs this year. And the Patriots did beat them the last time we went down to Columbia to play them. That score was a win, 86-64. to 64. If you're new to Francis Marion women's basketball, you're going to see a heaping helping of Lauren Taylor and Zaria Woods. They are two of the premier post players in the Beach Belt Conference and have done huge amounts of damage over the last month and a half for the Patriots. Patriots had a little bit of a slow start coming out of the gate in the Peach Belt Conference. Uh, I'm sorry, coming out of the Peach Belt Conference, going into Conference Carolina. They dropped four in a row right out of the gate, starting with Coker, Emmanuel, Mount Olive, and Barton. And then they started to get on a little bit of a win streak. And the Patriots have not looked back since that point and have gotten themselves a lot of respect here in this first year of Conference Carolinas. And they, they certainly look like they're going to be on pace to make the conference playoffs when they come up around in about a month, early in March. So they've gone ahead and cleared the floor right now. So let's take a look at our starting lineups, first of all, for the Converse University Valkyries, once again coming in with a record of 2-15 and 15 in the conference, 3-17 and 17 overall. First of all, we've got a 5'10 freshman guard from Salisbury, North Carolina, number zero, Colby Perry. We have a 5'5 junior guard from Austin, Texas, number two, Zara Cross. At 5'10", playing forward, a sophomore from Rollsville, North Carolina, number 14, Alisa Davenport. A 6'1 freshman forward, sometimes in the middle from Charlotte, North Carolina, Amaya Perkins, number 15. And rounding out the starting five for the Valkyries, we have a 5'10 sophomore guard for McCormick, South Carolina, number 21, Jordan Brown. The head coach for the Valkyries is head coach Samantha Davidson. Her assistant coach is Shelby Dre. The graduate assistant coach is Brooke Swift. And their athletic trainer is Emily Morris. Now let's take a look at our Patriots starting lineup. First all for the Patriots. A 5'7 junior guard from Rock Hill, South Carolina, number four, Scarlett Gilmore. A senior guard, 5'8 from Sanford, North Carolina, number five, Jasmine May. Running the point to begin with, we've got a 5'6 sophomore guard from Goose Creek, South Carolina, number 11, Anaya Oliver. Starting on the wing, a 5'9 freshman guard from North Augusta, South Carolina, Number 25, Kiana Lee. And in the middle for the Patriots, a six-foot sophomore center from Blycewood, South Carolina. Number 32, Lauren Taylor. The head coach for the Patriots is head coach Jerry Porter. Her assistant coach, it's Jonette Walker. And our athletic trainer 
is Haley Black. So they've got a little razzle dazzle going on right now. Uh, inter introducing everybody from the Patriots. They're going to be wearing their home whites with red trim, blue numbers and letters. The Valkyries come in wearing their away purples. They'll have yellow numbers and letters with yellow trim and white piping. And now for today's Patriot starter, started at guard, a junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. So the Patriots four, coming into this game with a win streak of one, had dropped a couple of close ball games, 73 to 75 to uh, Shawan and 87-94 in overtime at King. Uh, so a couple of losses that the Patriots weren't really expecting there, but they've won eight out of their last 11 and on a pretty darn good winning streak this season after a little bit of a slow start. Once again, those Patriots, we are 10 and eight, a couple of points over 500 in Conference Carolina, and we're 11 and nine overall for the season. So we're just about ready to tip things off here. It's a wonderful afternoon, beautiful day outside, but if you want to come inside and watch some basketball, come on out. Patriots are playing, both the men's and women's teams are playing some good basketball of late. In the circle for the Valkyries, Amaya Parkins. She'll go up against Lauren Taylor for the Patriots. And we are just about ready to go here. There goes the ball. The tip is up. It's on the deck. And the Valkyries come away with possession. Patriots start out man-to-man -man defense. Step back jumper from the top of the key. No good by number 21, Jordan Brown. That goes out of bounds. Patriots with possession. <laughs> Oliver, sophomore. A lot of experience this year running the point for the Patriots. She has it deep on the left wing. Gilmore thought about a three, then she drives in, gets it to the right block. No good, gets her own rebound, goes up strong, high off the glass, and she knocks it down. The Patriots are a fairly young squad. Gilmore, a junior, one of the older members of the team. Drive down the baseline, front iron, no good. Patriots come away. Taylor with the rebound. Oliver wisely pulls it back out. Gets it inside. And a nice turnaround and soft touch by Lauren Taylor. Like, as I said earlier, Taylor, one of the premier post players in Conference Carolina. Parkins is going to have her hands full all day with that. Nice interior move by number 21, Brown, but couldn't get the spin off the glass to go down. Kick outside. Deep jumper, no good. Rebound inside by Lee, and number 25, 25 Kiana Lee, gets the bucket. Patriots up 6-0. Two minutes gone here in our first quarter of play. Back iron on the three-pointer by Davenport. Gilmore streaks down the floor. A little bit of a shoulder, but she draws the foul on number two. That'll be Zara Cross, her first personal foul. Teams first. We're going to see a substitution come in for the Valkyries. Number 34, David West. She's a six foot 
sophomore center from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Turnover on the carry by the Patriots. Free throw distance for Brown. Uh, I'm sorry, Parkins that time. Missed iron. Taylor can take a three. Inside. Deep to Taylor. Goes up against David. Oh, and we have a stuck ball as she tried to go up with the left hand. Good defense that time by the Valkyries. David West bodying up on Taylor. So the stuck ball in the rim gives us a jump ball. Patriots have possession on that. Almost a five-second call that time. Patriots having trouble getting the ball inbound. Stolen away by Brown. And she slips on the deck. But Valkyries maintain possession. Lee works on cross, has to back it out. Davin gets the ball inside. She does a turnaround. Soft shot, no good, though. And the Patriots run back the other way. <laughs> Taylor, 14-footer. She drains it on the baseline. David West tapped her chest on that one, saying that was her fault. She didn't go out on Taylor. That's what makes Taylor so hard to guard is because she does have a good-looking mid-range and long-range jump shot along with just an unbelievably solid game underneath. That's going to be our first personal foul on Jasmine May, number five. First team foul, obviously. And the free throw is up and good by Jordan Brown. Second free throw up, good as well. Brown averages almost eight points per game this season. Hasn't taken a lot of free throws, but she nailed those two. Brown. Nice drive that time by Oliver. Just couldn't get the finish. We had a travel. It was a nice pump fake, and it got Scarlett Gilmore off the floor. She could have had an easy lane to the basket, but she didn't put the ball on the floor fast enough, and Davenport travels. Another turnover goes to the Patriots. 8-2, our score. Patriots scoring a slow down a little bit in the last two minutes. Oliver drives inside, kicks it back out. Gilmore for three, right side. In and out, no good. Lee kept it alive, but West comes away with the board for the Valkyries. Cross. Almost turned the pass over. She gets it back and collects the offense. Drives left side. A little bit out of control. And Oliver gets the ball. Stolen away. That's happened a couple of times this year where the Patriots have had trailers that haven't barked out the danger to the point guard. Timeout on the floor. Media timeout. So that takes us to our first media timeout. With 4.59 left to go in the first quarter of play. Patriots up by six. 8-2 is our score. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network.
This is Conference Carolinas. Here we are back at the Smith Center. Patriots enjoying a lead in this first five minutes of play. Just a reminder that the Francis Marion men's and women's basketball teams will host Barton College on Wednesday with the women's game tipping off at 5.30 p.m. while the men's will tip off somewhere around 7.30 after the women's game is over. Inside to West, turn around too strong, and Lee comes away with the rebound. She gets fouled by number 15, Amaya Parkins. Oliver works on cross. Gilmore deep on the right wing. Tried to fire it inside to Lee, and it was a scorcher of a pass, but Lee thinks she should have had it. A little sporadic and fast and loose on the offensive end the last few possessions for the Patriots. Converse doing a lot of movement without the ball. I like what they're trying to get accomplished here. And there was a three-second call inside. So I thought the offensive motion was really good. They just got caught daydreaming in the lane. And another turnover goes to the Patriots. Oliver deep on the left wing now. Looks inside. They double-team Taylor. Now they spread out a little bit. Lee has it. Gilmore goes baseline. Tried to feed it inside. It goes off of West's leg. And Caballo kicks it on over to number one, Lindsey Harden. And the Patriots lead cut down to four. Lee, right baseline, buries the 15-footer. I always love to mention that mid-range jump shot. Caballo a little bit fancy with that pass and throws it into the stands. Patriots ball. Nobody seems to know how to defend that mid-range jumper these days because everybody practices inside game and that long-distance three-pointer. But the Patriots have quite a few players that can really do damage at around the 14, 15, 16 foot mark. As, they, as I say that, Keanu Lee rims one out. Almost had another mid-range baseline jumper. That one didn't go in, but it was rebounded by Jasmine Staley. Zero, Colby Perry. Zero, Colby Perry back in for... The Valkyries, also number 21, Brown. And Jasmine, who checked in at the last dead ball, gets her first point of the ball game. Jasmine's a 6'1 junior center from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And she's two for two from the stripe. Patriots back up by eight. Cross sets up the offense for the Valkyries. Skip pass. Three-pointer. Left side. And once again, Lindsey Harden is feeling it. She's got five points in the last two possessions. Gilmore goes baseline. Goes up around. Unfortunately, can't get it to finish. Staley goes up. And two point blank shots for the Patriots won't go down as Gilmore had done a wonderful job of getting to that baseline and getting free to the basket. Back iron, no good. 
Rebound goes to the Valkyries and nice put back finish by Sidney Wilson. Top three pointer and Keanu Lee drops the three. So now both teams starting to assert themselves offensively. I think the Patriots need to put somebody on number one, Lindsey Harden. And she picks up the offensive board, gets it back to number 42. Wilson back irons it as well. And Jasmine comes away with the board for our Patriots. Oliver goes baseline. Gets all the way around, reverse layup, no good. Gets her own board, goes up strong, no good. Staley gets it, and she gets fouled on the interior. So Ava Carvalho picks up the personal foul. That's going to be the team's fourth. So the Patriots will be shooting free throws the rest of the way with 118 to go in this quarter. Stanley knocks down her third free throw. And four for four from the charity stripe for Jasmine. She's had a good impact since she's been here. A couple of rebounds and four points in just a couple of minutes of play. Doing some good work on the interior. Stolen away by number 20, Jada Richards, and she goes easy with the left hand. So Richards with the nice defensive play and the basket. Patriots up by 10, 19-9, under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Caballo, cross, on the left elbow, drive inside, and we have a hack on the arm. That's going to be... Uh, number four, Scarlett Gilmore. That's her pers first personal foul. Team second. Davenport, number 14, back in for the Valkyries. They'll inbound underneath their own basket. Brown goes in strong, and we're going to call it travel. Coach Porter having a couple of words, giggling with the official on the far side. Stanley thought about going inside, then decided not to. Jada with nice fight by Kabbalah that time, as I thought Stanley was going to pick up the... Offensive rebound once again. The Patriots, number 11, Anaya Oliver. Oliver gets called for her first personal foul. Team's third. 12 seconds to go here. Patriots still up by 10. Shot clock is off. And Kabbalah turns the ball over with four seconds, 3.9 to be exact. Oliver wisely going to let that go to about half court before she even picks it up. Crosses over, Kabbalah goes inside. And couldn't quite get it over the rim. Nice try that time by the Patriots as the quarter came to an end. But 19 points for the Patriots, good offensive output there. A 10-point lead, 19-9 is our score. We'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment. This is the Patriot Sports Network.
There was a couple of droughts in the first quarter that really kind of affected both teams' shooting percentage. The Patriots were 7 of 19 from the floor, about 37%. I know that Coach Porter wants that shooting percentage to go up. A lot of point-blank shots missed by the Patriots, but they still did a good job of finding ways of getting balls in the basket. They were 1 of 2 from beyond the arc and 4 of 4 all by Jasmine Stanley on the free throw line. 3 of 14 from the floor were the Valkyries, only 21%, 1 of 2 from beyond the arc as well, and 2 for 2 from the free throw line. And the Patriots enjoy that 10-point leave, and Harden goes in and out. She got a wide-open look, and that's not one player that the Patriots want to let alone inside. They get it to Taylor, it goes up too strong, and Harden comes away with the rebound for the Valkyries. Shot no good, and the ball floats out of bounds. Number 21, Janiah Haygood couldn't corral it. And so the Valkyries maintain possession. They go over the top. Good defense that time by Haygood. Oh, that might have been Jada Richards with the quick hands. Harden goes inside. Pass back outside to Cross. She takes the deep three, draws iron, and can't get it to go down. Taylor comes away with the board for the Patriots. She takes the three, top of the key. Shots it. She knocks it down. And I was saying earlier, that is why Lauren Taylor is such a handful for these teams to figure out how to guard. She can drop it from beyond the arc. She's great in mid-range, and she's so strong underneath the basket. First time that Stanley and Taylor have been on the floor together. Cross gets into the lane and scores for the Valkyries. Patriots, 11-point lead. Haygood gets it over. Taylor t from the free throw line off the glass, no good. And Taylor gets the offensive board in the basket. Two minutes gone here in the second quarter. Patriots with their biggest lead of 13 points. That ball looked like it was partially blocked by Taylor as it came out of Parkins' hands. And Haygood has it. They go inside. Taylor takes a couple of dribbles and good defense. I thought that was a foregone conclusion of a basket and really good defense that time by Amaya Parkins to block that ball out of bounds. Possession stays with the Patriots, though. Richards for three. Back iron, no good. Ball tipped around. Taylor had it. Knocked away once again by Parkins. And it will stay with the Patriots. 18 on the shot clock. Substitution for the Valkyries. We're going to see Ali Patillo. Patillo, sorry. We'll check in. Number 33. Cross almost picked up the steal on the inbounds pass for the Valkyries, but Richards wrestled it away. Owens running the point now. Kicks it back to Haygood for three. Front iron, no good. And Davenport pulls it back. Takes the three-pointer, and she buries it. So she cuts that Patriots lead back down to 10. Taylor, left wing, takes the three. Shotzi, she buries another one, and Lauren Taylor. That time they did extend the defense out on her. Sydney Wilson 
drew the duties. Just a good shot by Taylor once again. She's got 12 points, leading all scores, almost outscoring the Valkyries by herself. Cross. And we have another three-second call on the Valkyries. Again, on that offensive set, the Valkyries showed really good ball movement and movement without the ball were really setting into their offense and then just fell asleep once again in the lane. Taylor, top of the key, swings it over. Haygood crosses over, loses it off her foot, but Owens is there to retrieve the garbage. Crossover by Lee. And that one actually did kick off of Lee's leg. Quick hands by the Valkyries defense. I believe it was Cross who got a piece of that ball, and it bounced off Lee's foot out of bounds. Turnover. Inside, nice move with the right hand by Wilson. Richard tried to step back three, no good. Valkyries coming back down. Cross spots up from 14, left wing, no good. Taylor comes away with a rebound. Snatches it away from Parkins. Owens trying to see what develops. They finally get it inside to a wide open Haygood, and she misses. That was wide open, so wide open. And nice defense that time by the combination of Haygood and Lee. Causes the turnover. Patriots will have the ball when we come back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Smallphones Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Swamp Fox Club for their support. Thank you. 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 Back here at the Smith Center, the Patriots have an 11-point lead, 4.38 to go in this first half of play, leading all scores. Leading the way, we have Lauren Taylor, number 32 for the Patriots. On the floor, we've got, looks like, our starting lineup back out there. Gilmore has it deep on the left wing. Lee and Taylor got caught up in the middle, and we're going to have some interference. A hold on Amaya Parkins. That's her second personal foul. Only the team's first. We're going to have another body foul. So this quarter had gone by over halfway through without any fouls called. And now there's been two quick ones on the Valkyries. I like the clean, aggressive, but clean play of both these squads. And again, good defense that time by Cross causes the turnover. The 
they lost that ball right in front of me, as a matter of fact. Four minutes to go in our first half. Cross gets it inside. Good ball movement. Open three, Davenport, no good. And offensive rebound goes to the Valkyries. And we have a basket, but we also have a foul on the inside. So Wilson picks up the basket. And we have a hole on the floor. We'll see who that's on. So number 15, Amaya Parkins picks up another personal foul. I believe that is her third. It is. So Parkins with a little bit of foul trouble here late in the second quarter. Taylor kicks it back outside. Gilmore drives, loses the ball. Converse comes away with it. Davenport gets it inside. Wilson with a strong move. Right hand, no good. And Gilmore tracks it down. And now the Patriots have many numbers, four on three, but back it out. Taylor spins right hand, too strong. And Wilson comes away with the board for the Valkyries. Under three to go now in the first half. Wilson, free throw line, kicks it back outside. Davenport dives down the right lane, scoops underneath, and we're going to have a foul on the inside. I believe that'll put Davenport on the line to shoot a pair. That's going to be on Lauren Taylor. West back in for the Valkyries as Davenport knocks down the first one. At the line for Converse, number 14, Alisa Davenport. 66% free throw shooter on the season. She knocks down both of those and pulls the Valkyries back within seven. Taylor for three, Shotzi, she knocks down another one. So Taylor with 15 points and three three three-pointers this afternoon. Nice kick out to Cross, Cross for three. Doesn't draw iron and William, Lauren Taylor with good position takes care of the offensive glass. Oliver drives in, Lee, right elbow, no good. But tracked down by May, offensive board, keeps the possession with the Patriots. Gilmore, three on the right side, bounces around, hits the cable. So that will be a dead ball going to Converse. We're going to see Lindsey Harden check back into the ball game. Cross just walks the ball up for the Valkyries. They set up into their offense. 15 on the shot clock. Harden for three left side. Side iron, no good. West gets on the deck, but Lee comes away with it. We have some congestion, and there's going to be a foul on Cross. Eighty seconds to go. First half. Patriots working around the horn. Oliver gets inside. We'll have a foul. That should be on the floor. But we're going to be in the bonus, so the Patriots are going to shoot a couple of free throws. Check it back in for Converse. Number 30, Ava Carvalho. 
Caballo back in for the Valkyries. Anaya is a 76% free throw shooter this season. Rattles that first one out. She's one of our better free throw shooters. Patriots jump back to a 10-point lead after Taylor's last three-pointer. And the second free throw is up and good. Patriots up by 11. 110 to go in the first half. Caballo now works it up for the Valkyries. Harden. Thought about that three, top of the key. She's been one of their more consistent scorers. Lee gets it in to May, who can't get it to go down. Woods gets the rebound, uses her size, gets some space. And Taylor with 17 points here in the first half. 36 to go. Kabbalah dives into the lane, picks up the foul on number 11, Oliver. That's only the Patriots' second team foul. It's a nice second. And that's going to get Owens off the deck. I don't think Coach Porter wants Oliver to pick up a cheap third foul with only 35 seconds to go in this first half. Harden hands it off. Drive inside. Teardrop over. How about that? That was Owens. So Owens does pick up the foul. That might have been Oliver's. That's going to put Jordan Brown on the line. Brown's a 39% free throw shooter. She can't get that one to rattle around home. Here comes the second one. In and out, no good. That one looked like it was ready to go down, and it just bounced back out. 24, three-pointer, Shotzi and Scarlett Gilmore. Uh, the, she must have been right inside the three-point line. But she gives the Patriots the largest lead of the ball game at 15 points. Shot clock is off now. Valkyries get the last possession once again. Backdoor cut to Harden and a nice finish. Owens. A little bit heavy. But the Valkyries, good job knocking down that Last bucket to pull themselves within 13 points. 35-22 is our score. Good half of basketball by the Patriots. We'll be back in just a moment to discuss first half statistics. This is the Patriot Sports Network. The world is changing, and Francis Marion University is leading the way as it prepares the young men and women for the future. We've added five new classroom buildings and 13 new academic programs in the past six years, and more are on the way. We're preparing to build a new environmental research center. We're expanding programs in engineering, business, education, healthcare, and the arts and sciences. And we're adding new fields when they're needed. When tomorrow comes, we'll be ready. Best of all, our students will. Welcome back here at halftime. The Patriots with a fairly decent lead here, 35-22. We've got about 13, 14 more minutes before second half action starts. Let's see how we got here. For the Converse University Valkyries, they were 8 of 28 from the floor. That's only 29%. I know they need to get that shooting percentage up. They were 2 of 8, 25% from beyond the arc, and 4 of 6 from the free throw line. They did have six assists on those eight field goals. They also had nine turnovers and five steals, one block shot. Leading the way scoring for them was number one, Lindsey Harden. She had seven points, a three, and a couple of baskets. One layup and one from mid-range. Patriots 
got their 35 points on 13 of 36, only 36% from the floor, but they're making up with it with some good defense. I know Coach Porter wants that shooting percentage to go up. They're also helping themselves out tremendously, shooting 44% from beyond the arc, 4 of 9, and they're 5 of 6 from the free throw line, 83%. They did have 8 assists on those 13 field goals. They had 8 turnovers two steals, and one block shot. Now, leading the way, obviously, for the Patriots is number 32, Lauren Taylor. But not only does she have 17 points, but guess what? She has 10 rebounds in the first half. So she has captured a double-double right here in the first half of play. So congratulations on that, uh, Mark. I know she doesn't care about those things uh, until after the outcome of the game. And so she'll be trying to add to those numbers to secure a victory for the Patriots if we can do that in the next two quarters of play. Patriots dominating the boards right now, 27 to 13 over Converse, which is a, a little surprising to me because Converse actually does have really good size and they do match up pretty well with the Patriots in a lot of those low post positions, but the Patriots are doing a great job of getting in the correct position. Patriots have 11 offensive rebounds. That's where most of the difference is. So all I can say with the Patriots is keep on doing what you're doing, possibly shoot a little bit better than 36%. Uh, and we might be able to put another W in the win column. We'll find out in the next 40, uh, 20 minutes of play when we come back for second half action in about 10 minutes. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Let me paint you a picture. All of the graduates, all of the faculty, all of the administration, all of the Board of Trustees is decked out in their regalia, their black robes, their hats, their gold tassels. It's just a most beautiful picture of a very formal kind of occasion. And here we march into the gymnasium and the music is playing and the gym is packed. And as we come in and as you look up at all those people, you see families, huge families. You see not just mama and daddy and two brothers and a sister, but there's grandmama and granddaddy, there's the aunt and the uncle, they're the cousins, they're the next door neighbors. And you know why all those people are there? Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. And I can guarantee you that when you go to that graduation, you leave with a tear in your eye because it's so, so special. The desire and the love to take care of people is something that you kind of have innate. You kind of just have that thing. Um, but Francis Marion gave me the principles and they taught me the core values. They taught me leadership qualities and they've just been foundational and offered a family that I can keep going back to. So even though my personal biological family didn't go to a university um, and I didn't really get any experience, wisdom from them for that, I gained a family that could tell me all about college and even the afterlife of college by coming to Francis Marion. Um, and I'm not sure you would have that with you know, other universities. throughout the nurse, the nurse practitioner program, you're already a nurse and you're a devoted nurse and you don't wanna just quit. Um, and 
that's that was another thing I specifically picked this program was because I was able to look at the curriculum and know that I could work. I even asked a couple of the professors, one being Dr. Hopla, before I started the program, and even she told me, yes, you can still work while you do this, um, and I did. I worked 40 hours a week, five days a week. Um, sometimes it had to be six, six days a week um, to get my 40 hours in, and I still did the nurse practitioner program. Um, it wasn't easy, but nothing worth having is easy, so. which the benefit of having um, classmates and professors that were both working and studying is, you know, we would get worked up and worried about how would we ever do this? Um, and then they would say, well, you know, I can work these two 12-hour shifts on the weekends and then have the week to study. Or a professor may say, well, you can get creative with your hours here. So you can tell that they've done this, you know, that you can tell that they've gotten creative with their time as well. Um, and then all of a sudden it doesn't feel like such a daunting task because, again, you gain wisdom from their experience. Choosing a college isn't easy. There are lots of choices to make and so many variables to consider. How do you know when you've found just the right place? The right college will make you feel at home. And that begins with a sense of place. At Francis Marion University, we have a beautiful campus that's safe, well-maintained, and filled with smiling faces. It's the kind of place where you feel you belong where you wake up in the morning and know that the day ahead will be one you'll savor and enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean life at FMU is easy. There will be challenges. Hard work is expected. We take our academics seriously. You should too. Earning one of our degrees is a real achievement. But some toil, some time invested in a difficult task, that's okay. That's how you grow how you become someone. FMU is a comprehensive public university, and when it comes to academics, our students have a wide range of choices. We offer more than 75 majors and courses of study. Our professional schools in healthcare, engineering, business, and education are all well-known and respected across the state. At the same time, the arts and the sciences remain the core of what we do. They are the perfect foundation for a successful career and a meaningful life. Programs are important and we'll continue to work to produce new curriculum that meets the needs of our changing world. But we also know that a great education is less about what is taught and more about who is doing the teaching. FMU's faculty is made up of distinguished scholars and renowned researchers. They're experts in their field, and expert teachers too. They love the give and take of the classroom and revel in the progress their students make. In FMU's intimate academic environment, where small classes are the norm, you'll get to know a lot of these dedicated men and women. Some you will remember forever. The academic work and its rewards are why you are here. But there will be a time and place for play too. We have more than 60 different student organizations and field teams in 14 NCAA sports. A robust schedule of extracurriculars is a big part of each semester. You'll find space here for rest and relaxation. You'll make new friends and build relationships that last a lifetime. And then, almost as quickly as it all began, it will be over. You will graduate and move on to a life and career full of promise. You'll leave memories behind. You'll leave FMU, but you'll be welcome back anytime. Home is like that, you know. Welcome home. Welcome to FMU.
Well, the Patriots haven't needed anybody to lean on this afternoon. It's 35-22, a 13-point lead for the Patriots. Their largest lead of the ball game has been 15 points. They enjoyed that right before Harden knocked down a last-second basket for the Valkyries to cut the lead down to 13. The Patriots playing some pretty good basketball right now. The shooting percentage is not where I know head coach Jerry Porter would like it, but they're playing very good, strong defense, holding their opponents to only 28, 29% from the floor. So I know Coach Porter's happy with that number, just not the corresponding one on her side of the ledger. We'll see what the Patriots dial up here in the second half. Lauren Taylor, as we were talking about, number 32 for the Patriots. She has a double-double in the first half, 17 points and 10 rebounds. She's been a force, and nine of those 17 points came from beyond the arc. She's been known to take three-pointers from time to time, and she's very good at knocking them down, but that's not been the primary focus of her offensive game but she's made it so today, and she has definitely made the Valkyries pay. We're about 30 seconds away from second half action. The Valkyries should get the... Actually, no, possession arrow is with the Patriots. There was that frozen ball in the first half. So the Patriots will get the ball to open the second half of play, see if they can't add on to this already substantial lead of 13 points. And there's the horn, so the Patriots now will be in the east end of the gymnasium. All right, man, let's get ready. And here we go. Oliver starts the offense for the Patriots, man-to-man -man defense supplied by Converse. Yep. Taylor, guess what? She buries the mid-range jumper right there on the left baseline to a per total of 19 points on the game. Jump stop, no good that time by Brown. Patriots come back the other way. Lee, skip pass. Gilmore thought about a three. And they back it out. Gilmore drives in, gets all the way to the rack, and finishes with a right hand. So Gilmore picks up her sixth point of the ball game. Cross those things down. High screen by West. She goes over to set it once again. Cross for three, rattles around, no good. Gilmore comes away with the board. Inside, Taylor, easy finish. Taylor beat West down the floor and scored easily, so I think we might see a substitution coming in for Devin West. We've got 42 at the scores table. Sydney Wilson checking in, and so is Lindsey Harden. But that will also take us to our first media timeout with the Patriots now with a larger lead than they had at halftime, 19 points. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Carolinas.
Back here at the Smith Center where the Patriots have jumped all over the Valkyries. Not even two minutes gone in the second half. Patriots 13 point lead has now been extended to 19. And Lauren Taylor now has over 20 points, 21 points. Harden takes the three right side. She buried it. So Harden doing what she did starting off in the second half. Back iron by Taylor. She knew she had missed it. They go over the top. And Wilson beat the Patriots down the floor. And that's a five-point swing now for Converse. Oliver has it now. 15 on the shot clock. Hand off to May. Lee thought about a three, but she traveled as she made the move to dive inside. Patriots turn the ball over. Turnover is about equal in the first half. Nine for Converse, eight for the Patriots. Cross goes inside. Wilson has to kick it back outside. It's tapped away by May, but Brown showing some real speed there, tracked it down. Four on the shot clock. Gilmore gets it to Oliver, who takes the top of the key jump shot. No good. Brown comes away with the board for the Converse University Valkyries. She gets ahead of steam, goes inside, and Lee is going to get called for the foul. Foul for the Patriots, number 25, Kiana Lee. That's only her first personal foul. At the line for Converse, number 21, Jordan Brown. They're going to call that a shooting foul as well. Coach Porter didn't like the fact that that was a shooting foul either, and I don't blame her. That, it looked like the foul happened way out on the floor. And Brown cuts the lead down to 12. So the Patriots had exploded to a 19-point lead, and then the Valkyries doing a good job of shaving that back down to something smaller than it was at halftime. Lee has it. She takes the three right side. Shotzi, she buries it. Big answer that time by the Patriots. Lee now with her 10th point has double digits. Inside, Wilson. She gets underneath Taylor. Wilson has been the most effective player they've put against Taylor today. Oliver goes in strong, too strong. Taylor gets the board. She spins and with the left hand softly finishes. I think she took a little elbow or something to the lip. They go straight back inside to Wilson, who kicks it outside. Brown for three, and she buries it. Valkyries showing some offensive prowess. Middle of this third quarter. Gilmore drives in, and they let her get all the way to the basket, and she finishes with that scoop right hand once again. Inside. Sydney has it. She has to kick it outside. That one's stolen away by May. May is up against Harden. She drives in strong, goes up with the left hand, can't get it to go down. Harden picks up the foul. Welcome Converse, number one, Lindsay Harden. And we're going to see some free throws coming when we come back. Patriots with a 14-point lead. 
halfway through this third quarter of play. Patriots up 48-34. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Smallfoss Club is a fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Swamp Fox Club for their support. Thank you. 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 It's been a very strange five minutes of play. The Patriots have expanded their lead by one point in this first five minutes. Had gone up 19 points. And then the Valkyries just stormed right back, led by Harden. And Brown knocking down some deep shots. May on the line, she'll shoot a couple. First one, can't get it to go down. Rattled around and then popped out. She knocks down the second one. And after one of two from the line, she'll go get a little break on the bench. And Jada Richards, number 20, checks in for the Pats. Brown top of the key goes inside. Left side, open shot, no good. Lee with the board. Patriots push it back up the floor. Valkyrie's easily back. Oliver. 13 on the shot clock. Inside. Jasmine. A little strong on the baseline. Eight footer. Brown with the head of speed. Goes up strong. And the Patriots didn't stop the ball. And Brown scores easily. Gilmore. She goes down that right side, kicks it outside. Staley goes up strong and gets called for the charge. Cross did a good job of diving in underneath right before she left her feet. Checking in for Converse, number 33, Ali Patillo. Number 33, Ali Patillo, and for the Valkyries. Stanley for the Patriots had some productive minutes there in the second quarter. Under 10 on the shot clock now. Cross dives into the baseline. Tried to go up underneath off the bottom of the bas backboard. And Lee forces it. Gets it to Stanley. And a nice block shot that time by Parkins. And Brown gets fouled as she once again was going to force the issue. When she gets ahead of steam up going across that midcourt line, the Patriots need to figure out a way to get in that lane and stop her. We're going to see number 32, Lauren Taylor, check back in for the Patriots. Brown knocks down the first one. We also have Keanu Bryant back or in for the first time today for the Patriots. She's on that left block. Rattles around, no good. Taylor comes away with a rebound. They go inside. Bryant gets 
knocked down, and that'll be a foul on number 21, Brown. Her first personal foul, team second. They get it into Gilmore. Gilmore goes up on her scoops. And finally, Taylor gets the offensive rebound. Gilmore was looking for a little bit of a body foul there, which I don't blame her, but we could call that good defense on the Valkyries. But Wood, Taylor comes away with the offensive rebound, adding to her double-digit total of rebounds. Number 13, Bryant. Keanu Bryant picks up her first personal foul. That's the team's fourth, so the Valkyries will be shooting... Double free throws the rest of this third quarter. Parkins goes inside and too strong with the left hand. And Taylor comes away with the rebound. We're going to have a foul called on number 15, Amaya Parkins. Probably a little bit of a frustration foul for that young lady after she missed the shot. It was a tough contested shot, but I think she'll probably say that she would make that nine out of ten times. Jada goes inside. They get it to Taylor, who kicks it right back outside to Richards. Ten on the shot clock. High screen by Taylor. Oliver drives in, kicks it back out. Taylor takes the three. No good. And the ball was knocked out of bounds. It stays with the Patriots. We're going to see Sidney Wilson check back in for Converse. Patriots have a fresh 20. Gilmore drives in, takes it to four feet, drains it. She's going to the line, and she finally pills. Draws the foul on the interior, and she can get the opportunity to get three the old-fashioned way. Substitution for Converse, number 14, Alisa Davenport. That foul was on number one, Lindsay Harden, her second personal foul. Gilmore, a 74% free throw shooter, buries that one, and she does convert the old-fashioned three. Patriots now up by 17. Less than two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Brown works on Kiana. And so, no joy that time for Brown. In and out, no good by Taylor. She's had two three-pointers in the last two possessions, and they have been so close to going down. That was almost a really spicy play by the Valkyries. A great pass by Patia, not Patio, Kabbalah. And then Wilson just could not quite finish the reverse. No good. Bryant gets the rebound and then the strong putback with the left hand. Strong interior work and the Patriots lead back up to 19. Harden goes inside, gets it up and is fouled by Gilmore. Harden on the season, an 85% free throw shooter. I would have expected something similar to those numbers watching the way that young lady has shot the ball today. In for Converse, number two, Zara Cross. Checking in for the Valkyries, number two. Cross back in to run the point. Patriots have Owens and Haygood back on the floor. Second free throw is up and good. Under a minute in the third quarter here. Richards, top of the key. 14 on the shot clock. Inside, hey, good. She takes it back out. Nine on the shot clock. Inside. And Bryant, who actually spun the wrong way, spun right into the defense, but got around her, finished, and gets the foul. So 
the easy basket was a move to the left. She spun into the defense and still, with a great move and a great finish, goes to the line. Amaya Parker picks up her second personal foul, and Kiana Bryant converts the three. Patriots up by 20, their largest lead of the ball game. 59-39, shot clock is off. And once again, Harden takes the three-pointer, and she rattles it home. And just as in the second quarter, right at the end of the first half, the Patriots get stuck by Harden. This time it's a three, cutting that lead down to 17 points. So the Patriots have one more quarter of basketball in them in this women's game. Then we'll have four, uh, two halves of basketball coming up after that in the men's arena. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriot Sports Network. The world is changing, and Francis Marion University is leading the way as it prepares the young men and women for the future. We've added five new classroom buildings and 13 new academic programs in the past six years, and more are on the way. We're preparing to build a new environmental research center. We're expanding programs in engineering, business, education, healthcare, and the arts and sciences, and we're adding new fields when they're needed. When tomorrow comes, we'll be ready. Best of all, our students will too. Getting ready to start the second half of play. Well, the Patriots did exactly what I was asking. They increased that field goal percentage. They were 10 of 19 from the floor. That's 53%. Some good shooting also by the Converse University Valkyries. They were 6 of 14. Their best shooting percentage of the day, 43%. And once again, Harden does some damage right at the end of a quarter. Nice rebound by Lauren Taylor. She's got 15 rebounds, 25 points, a monster game for her. Now she's got 16 rebounds, I'm sorry. They tried to go over the top inside. Ball knocked away, but Owens comes away with it. Three-point left wing. In and out, no good. Haygood couldn't track down the offensive board, and we go back the other way. Quick three-pointer by the Valkyries. No good. Three-pointer left side. Shotzi buried by number 21, Janiah Haygood. So the Patriots, one minute gone here in the fourth quarter. The lead was 20. Now it's back down to 17 because Lindsey Harden just knocked down her 18th point of the ball game. She's having a monster offensive ball game. And she picks up, almost gets the steal. Ball's on the deck, and we're going to have a jump ball. That's going to be possession arrow with the Patriots. So Harden that time getting it done on both the offensive and the defensive ends of the floor, forcing the jump ball. Almost got the steal. Owens. Taylor drives in strong, and we're going to have a block on the interior. So number 42, Sydney Wilson, will pick up the personal foul. That's only her first personal foul, which is a really good game considering she's playing against Lauren Taylor and banging inside. She's done as good a job as anybody on a night that it doesn't seem like anybody can stop Lauren Taylor. Steal that time by Harden. So Harden had two good defensive plays on one possession after draining a three. Cross for three. She buries it. 
And back-to-back three-pointers and a turnover by the Patriots have the Valkyries back within 14. Taylor goes down baseline, goes up strong with the right hand and finishes off the backboard. Cross has it now for the Valkyries. She stepped back, takes another three. This one rattles around no good. Slingshots out to Taylor, who gets it up the floor. And now we've got Haygood going in strong. She gets fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot a pair. That's going to be on number 14, Alicia Davenport, her second. And we'll see Brown back in for the Valkyries. Janiah Haygood. Hasn't taken that many free throws this season, but about a 72% free throw shooter, so a good percentage. And the first one's up, and she buries it. Patriots have been doing a good job on the interior all night long. Really good at not giving up too many second chances and really good at generating some second chances of their own. After that last quarter, the Patriots still dominating on the glass. It's even uh, more pronounced now. The Patriots, after the third quarter, and couldn't get the scoop shot, Richards. Patriots with 40 rebounds, only 18 rebounds for the Valkyries. Deep three by Cross, no good. It was right on target, just a little bit short. I wonder if the fatigue might be... There, she's a little slumped. I don't know if that is fatigue or a little disappointment after missing that shot. Richards goes inside, knocked away. Great defensive play that time by number 42, Sydney Wilson. Cross gets it to Wilson, who did a great job running the floor, and she finishes. So Sydney Wilson getting it done on both ends during that possession. And the Patriots up by 16. Taylor drives inside, ball's knocked away, and Hagen was there for the offensive rebound and another point-blank shot that goes rolls wanting. Brown inside. And foul by Taylor that time as Wilson had gotten herself in really good offensive position down there on the right block. Quick entry pass. Checking in for the Patriots, number 25, Keanu Lee. Number 25, Keanu Lee, back in for... Our Patriots. Number 42, Sydney Wilson. Sydney Wilson, who averages double digits for the Valkyries on the season, rattles the first one home. She's a 74% free throw shooter, averages just over 12 points per ball game. And she knocks them both down. She'll get a little bit of a breather, though. As we see Amaya Parkin, Parkins check back in. And we'll also see Ava Kabala. Keanu Lee has it deep on the left wing for the Patriots. Top of the key now. Extended tight defense by the Valkyrie. And once Haygood got by her defender, it was all over but the crying. Parkins kicks it back out. Brown wide open three. Goes off the far iron, but Caballo gets the rebound and then puts it off one of the Patriots. Possession stays with Converse University. We're going to call... A foul on the floor. I believe that's going to be on Kiana. Foul for the Patriots. Number 13, Kiana Bryant. A little too aggressive with the body. Maybe a couple of hands on her. And still a fresh 20 with five and a half minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Side iron, no good. Rebound goes to Taylor. Again, adding to her just... Gaudy numbers this evening, afternoon. Lee has it. 
Finally gets it over to Haygood. And then Taylor goes in strong and finishes with the right hand. Coach Porter popped up and took a timeout. That's going to be converted to a media timeout. So with 5.04 left to go in this ballgame, Patriots up by 18 points. 70-52 is our score. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Here we are back at the Smith Center where Lauren Taylor is creeping up on not only 30 points, but also 20 rebounds. So we'll see if she can't get those two minor milestones of 30-20. She's one point away with 29 points here and two rebounds away with 18. Cavallo picked up the ball, gets it over to Cross. Cross thought about a really deep three, drives it inside. Nice scoop pass and reverse by Brown. Very nice. Running off the offense that time by Cross. Lee has it. Now Taylor. I think Coach Porter said, let's take some time off the clock on that last timeout. Patriots going deep into the shot clock. Long three-pointer. Hey, good, no good. Ball kept around, and that's going to stay with the Patriots. Unfortunately, Amaya Parkins could not corral that rebound. Patriots took that way down. Taylor thought about doing something, and then kicks it back outside with that fresh 20. Oliver goes up strong. And we're going to see Anaya go to the line. Good free throw shooter for the Patriots. Cross picks up her fourth personal foul. She's been doing a good job for the Valkyries all afternoon, running the point. Four minutes to go in this ball game. Oliver missed the first one and the second one, both on the left side, but Kiana Bryant went ahead and got the offensive rebound for the Patriots. Lee gets the ball stripped away as she goes inside. Cross drove inside, couldn't get it to go down. Substitution for Converse, number 42, Sydney Wilson. I couldn't tell if Coach Porter was upset that there was no foul called on the inside on Lee or if she was upset with Lee taking such a quick shot into the shot clock rotation. I didn't see a foul. Looked like a good strip off of Lee. Brown goes in against Taylor. Can't get it to go, but gets her own rebound and follows up. Basketball 21, Jordan Brown. Patriots up by 14. Three and a half to go in the ball game. They get it inside. Taylor spins back out. Bryant, top of the key. And Keanu Bryant rattles it home. Brown goes over on Bryant. Spins inside, goes up strong with the right hand, and nice offensive move that time. 
And Coach Porter, understanding that this 14-point lead is not insurmountable if we're not going to play a little tighter defense and give them easy baskets on the interior. She's got them over on the bench right now, or actually it's a 30 seconds, so she's going to keep them standing. A couple of announcements once again. The Francis Marion men's and women's basketball teams will host Barton College on Wednesday with the women's game tipping off at 5.30 p.m., followed by the men's game at 7.30 p.m. The FMU softball team is playing a doubleheader against Augusta University this afternoon before returning home to entertain Limestone University for a doubleheader on Sunday. The first game will start at 1 p.m. at the FMU softball stadium in the Griffin Athletics Complex. The unbeaten FMU baseball team will play host to USC Aiken on Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Cormel Field at Sparrow Stadium, once again in the Griffin Athletic Complex. The Valkyries are applying some pretty significant full port pressure now. They're trapping, and they pull a steal. Brown gets it over to Cross. Cross is going to pull it back out. She didn't have the size or the numbers. And Kiana Lee is going to get called with the foul. Lee picks up her second personal foul. That's the team third, so both teams have three fouls. Both have one to give before getting into the double bonus with 2.42 to go in this ballgame. Patriots gotten themselves into a little bit of a dogfight here. This Valkyrie team is not going away. Brown gets it in. Kick back outside to Parkins. Cross dives in. Ball's blocked out of bounds with 13 on the shot clock. They'll keep possession. And the Patriots lost Sydney Wilson, but she couldn't knock it down from the right elbow. They go over the top, and Haygood goes up. Taylor tried to strip it away. The ball bounces around, and we have a travel. Turnover goes to the Patriots. The Patriots with a new shot clock, 30 seconds, 2.18 to go in the ball game. They've got a 14-point lead. We've got Haygood, Lee, Oliver, Bryant. And Huggins on the floor for the Patriots. Huggins finally takes it up, can't get it to go. And Bryant comes away with the offensive rebound, rattles it around, it won't go in. And... The interior player, Sidney Wilson, using that 6-1 frame to get the rebound. Out of the Patriot, number 10, Malia Owen. Owen picks up the personal foul. So the Valkyries will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Davenport has it. She picks up the dribble, kicks it over to Parkins inside. Wilson turns around, right hand, and buries it off the glass. Patriots almost lost it. They finally do. Brown goes up, and we're going to have a blocking foul. So Brown, score the basket. Haygood picks up the personal foul. Her first, and Brown with 18 points. Converts the three-point play. And the Valkyrie find themselves cutting that lead to single digits, nine points with a minute 21 to go. They call timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. This is Conference 
Carolinas. Not too long ago, the Patriots were up by as many as 20 points. The Valkyries have cut it down to nine points. Patriots done a pretty decent job of trying to shorten the game up. But the Valkyries took advantage and steal the in ball inbounds and an up scoop and an offensive rebound and a putback. And the Patriots... Now only up by seven. Good pressure. And the Patriots miss the wide open little eight footer. Cross goes in, goes around. Can't get it to go in, but offensive rebound and score by Sidney Wilson. Patriots. Eighteen seconds separate the shot clock and the game clock, and we have a foul called away from the ball on number 12, 21, Jordan Brown, away from the ball. They had a foul to give. Eva Carvalho checked back in. And we take another timeout by Converse. So as I was saying just a moment ago, just a few minutes ago, the Patriots were up by 20 points, and the Valkyries just stayed with it, stayed with it, stayed with it. And a couple of questionable shots by the Patriots, and next thing you know, the Valkyries are within five points with 35 seconds to go. There's two possessions. There's 20 seconds on the shot clock here. On the floor for the Patriots, we have Haygood, Lee, Huggins, Lauren Taylor, obviously, and our starting Point guard is back in the ball game, Anaya Oliver. She'll inbound the ball right in front of her own bench. Again, having trouble getting it in, and that's a five-second call, so the Patriots turn it over. Patriots playing some really, really tough mental basketball over the last couple of minutes. The pressure by the Valkyrie has really caused problems. In the full court, anything coming in bounds. Not sure what the officials are discussing there, but looks like we're about ready to play once again. I think you can't uh, make that many substitutions after a 30-second timeout. Even though there was a turnover. So the turnover, I think that's what head coach... Samantha Davidson is saying is, yes, on a, coming out of a 30 seconds, you can't make the substitutions, but since the Patriots turned the ball over without getting it in, she thought that was a dead ball, which means she could put in substitutions. And they're having, they're trying to figure out what the personnel can be for the Valkyrie.
So they're going to take a full timeout so they can make some substitutions. Interesting call. I don't know the the ruling on that. I'm assuming the officials do. They seem to still be d discussing it right now, but we'll be back in just a moment. 35 seconds left in this ballgame. Patriots clinging to a five-point lead. This is the Patriots Sports Network. So on the floor for the Patriots, we have Oliver, Gilmore, Haygood, Taylor, and Lee. Cross, Brown drives baseline. She's, ball's on the deck. The Patriots are fighting for it. They get it, and we have a jump ball. Possession arrow will stay with the Valkyrie, but 12 present seconds have fallen off the clock here. Coach Porter tried to call a timeout on the possession on the floor. It wasn't rewarded. Brown drives in, turn around, and she gets it to go down. And there's a couple of more seconds that should go back on the clock. It should be 17. That will take us to another timeout. Brown having a magnificent game. Over 20 points for her now. That'll take us to another full timeout. The Patriots will have possession, a three-point lead, and 17 seconds on the clock. We'll be back in just the a moment. The world is changing, this is and the Francis Patriots. Marion University is leading the way as it prepares the young men and women for the future. We've added five new classroom buildings and 13 new academic programs in the past six years, and more are on the way. We're preparing to build a new environmental research center. We're expanding programs in engineering, business, education, healthcare, and the arts and sciences. And we're adding new fields when they're needed. When tomorrow comes, we'll be ready. Best of all, our students will too. Here we are back at the Smith Center. Wasn't sure there was going to be this much drama in this game, but it certainly has turned out to be a great finish. Lauren Taylor got the inbounds, and she'll go to the line to shoot a pair on the bonus. At the line for the Patriots, number 32, Lauren Taylor. Taylor, a 67% free throw shooter this year. Some big opportunities right now for this young lady. And... The first one rattles in and out, keeping it a one possession ball game. Second opportunity coming. This young lady has had a monster ball game and buries that free throw for her 30th point and gives the Patriots a four point lead with just under 16 to go. Cross gets it to Harden. Harden picks up the high screen. She puts up the three pointer, air ball, and that goes out of bounds. Ball gets inbounded to Lee, and Keanu Lee, she'll go to the line and shoot a pair with just a tick under seven seconds. So a couple of makes here by Lee, and I think we might be able to escape with a victory. No matter what happens in this ball game, Lee buries the first one. 
I have a lot of respect for this Converse University squad. Getting down by 20 points, they fought tooth and nail and clawed it into a one-possession ball game. Cross, deep three, no good, and the game ends with the Patriots with a six-point victory, 75-69. to A big, big win for the Patriots. That's going to send us to 11 and 8 in the Peach Belt Conference and 14 and 8 overall. Converse is going to drop to 2 and 16 in the Conference Carolinas. I'm sorry, I keep uh, just habit of saying Peach Belt. And they will fall to 3 and 18 overall. So. We're going to take a look at some statistics in just a moment. I, uh, our good friend Alex Wober is across the way with our stat sheet. He's going to be coming in just a moment. Then we're going to take a little bit of a break and come back and set the table for second, our second game of the doubleheader, which is the men against the same Converse team. So it should be a really, really good matchup between two squads. The Patriots have been playing really good basketball on the men's side of things. Sometimes a little bit tricky uh, finishing some of these games out, but they did a great job just last night when they buried a last-second three-pointer to break a 92-92 tie and come away with the victory. That was Alex. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Let me. Alex, who was that? I, Alex Cox uh, uh, knocked that one down. And we'll talk more about that when we get to that point. So I see the, the statistics are coming right over here. I'm really curious to see what happened with Lauren Taylor's final statistics because she just had a fantastic game. She did get that 30th point, knocking down one of two free throws with the last couple of seconds, and she did. She got 21 rebounds and 30 points. So that is one of the biggest double-doubles I can remember anybody from the men's or the women's squad getting in any one game. So just a one-person wrecking crew she was, knocking down threes, going from the interior, 21 rebounds, 17 of them were defensive. So she was just really uh, crucial for us cleaning up those defensive boards. Let's take a look at our final game stats. Converse University had 69 points, and they got those on 25 of 67 from the floor. That's 37 percent. They were 7 of 21, 33 percent, not bad from beyond the arc, and 12 of 15, 80 percent from the free throw line. They did have 16 assists on those 25 field goals. They cleaned up the turnovers a great deal in the second half, only committing three in the second half uh, to finish up with 12. They had 11 steals and two block shots couple of really big performances by this Converse squad. Obviously, their leading scorer was Jordan Brown with 21 points, but also you had Lindsey Harden and Sidney Wilson, both with big games of their own, having 18 points apiece. Let's take a look at that Francis Marion line now. They had 75 points. They got those on 28 of 68 from the floor, 41% much better in the second half, and specifically that third period, getting that shooting percentage up. They were 6 of 16 from beyond the arc, 38%, and 13 of 18, 72% from the free throw line. They had 16 assists on those 28 field goals. They didn't clean up the turnovers in the second half with a total of 17, so they had 8 in the first half and 9 in the second, 4 steals and 2 block shots. Again, the biggest game of anybody on the docket today was those 30 points and 21 rebounds by number 32, Lauren Taylor. But also double-digit efforts from Scarlett Gilmore, number four with 11, 12, Kiana Lee. And uh, let's see, Jay, uh, Jasmine May had a, a point. Oliver had a point. Two points for Jada Richard, seven points for Janiah Haygood, seven points for Kiana Bryant. So the Patriots got some big games, especially by Lauren Taylor, but did do a good job of spreading it around. Points in the paint were actually pretty even, 34-32 going the way of the Patriots. Second chance points with those offensive rebounds by the Patriots. Just the, the total domination on the boards, uh, 21 uh, rebound difference, 51 for the Patriots, 30 for Converse. So those second chance points, 21 to 10. Fast break points, 11 to 9 in way of the Patriots. And then bench scoring came a great deal from uh, on Converse, 36 to 20. And that's because they had their leading score coming off the bench today with Sidney Wilson doing that. All righty, so 
a big win for the Patriots. Once again, that's going to send them to 13 and 9 on the season, 12 and 8 in the Conference Carolina standing. So they're moving up those ranks, getting a better seed and a better seed and a better seed in the potential visit to the Conference Carolinas uh, tournament coming up in just a couple of weeks. All righty. Well, we've got 25 minutes on the clock before our men's ball game, and so we'll take a break right here. We'll come back in about 20 minutes, and we'll set the table for the second game of our doubleheader. This is the Patriot Sports Network. <laughs> 